Hello, friends. Welcome to Saga Thursday, the show all about the skirmish miniatures game from Studio Tomahawk. I'm your host, Raj. What finally happened, Fimble Winter was this past weekend, my first standalone Saga tournament. We had 10 players from Illinois, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, which is pretty darn good for a niche game in the middle of an ongoing pandemic and in the middle of winter in Wisconsin far away from any large city. I uh, did some recording, took pictures, and tried to record some chats with the players. This was kind of a practice run on my part, seeing what works and what didn't. I wasn't planning to post anything, but I actually think I got some good material here. It's a chat with Andy, the overall winner of the event playing Normans and narrowly defeated Terry, who was running Mongols on the last table. Before we get into that, I'll show the overall results quick. The three scenarios we played were Violation, New Feud, and First Contact. These are modifications of the Book of Battle scenarios. And if you want to look at those or the tournament packet, I'll have a link below. They're over on the Raj Rules website. So let's jump into the chat with Andy. All right, we're here with the champion of the the frigid Fimble Winter <laughs> Championship leader, scoreboard, ultimate champion guy. Uh, so, you go by Andy or Andrew? Which do you prefer? I go by both, honestly. We, let's go by when, Andrew when, right now. Andrew, okay. Andrew it depends right if there's now. another Andrew around. Sometimes, sometimes. To, to drive it out. So. Yeah. Okay, cool. So people might recognize your voice from the Saga Ohio podcast. They may, yes. So you head it over there. Now they can look at your beautiful face, Ooh. physique. <laughs> you know, Mike DeManna didn't say how muscly you were. You're, yeah, that doesn't it, always come across yeah, in podcasts. Exactly. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> so you rolled up with Andrew for yeah. some games yep. of Saga. Yep. So Gustafson. you brought the Normans. And how did you decide on Normans, assuming uh, you have multiple warbands to choose from? I had just played a whole bunch of uh, Irish, uh, getting ready for CincyCon. You played and against I was, the Irish? No, playing? I played with the, uh, I brought Irish to CincyCon, okay. and I was tired of playing the Irish. Uh -huh. So they were out, and I played Yams Vikings at the last Adepticon years ago. And I just never, I've never brought my... Uh, Normans to a tournament, so it was time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Irish kind of skitty, a little shooty, choosing their Shoot. moment to strike. You could say the same thing about the Normans. I, per yeah, I really like that appeal to you. I really like the uh, combined arms feel of uh, combining that shooting and you know finally dropping that punch with that hearth guard when somebody's uh, got like a fatigue on them. Armor mm -hmm. six. I love using a hearth guard armor six. Throwing uh, that retreat on there for four defense dice, taking zero casualties is very satisfying when you kill a unit and take nothing in return. Uh huh. Yep. That's the, the ultimate saga play. Yes. Dish out death and suffer nothing in return. Yes. So yes. Any, take, take their spirit. Any battle board that can do that is a contender. We know Absolutely. some favorites out there. Absolutely. So the Normans, you were matched up. Round one, who did you, you play against? Uh, I played against Seth and Vikings, so I got a, I got a matchup I was happy with because mm -hmm. I'm real satisfied. I'm real, I, I know those Viking boards real well. That's where my strength is. Mm -hmm. I play my buddy Don 90% of the time, and that's he plays Vikings. So I knew what he was bringing to the table. So I was very happy with that matchup. Um, and he, then he played kind of defensively. I think he was didn't know how to approach... Um, all my shooting and my maneuverability. So he kind of sat back a little bit on his uh, objective markers, which kind of played to my strengths. Okay, I cool. just kind of plink, 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 plink away until it was time to, away. to, to make my move. Yeah. Uh, the big ability that exhausts you, now did he hold on to that, or how do you play around oh, that? Oh, you mean uh, his Odin? Odin, yeah. Is no, Odin? I, I ate that every turn. Every turn I, he, was, uh, he was hitting me with that. But he did at least use... I think some of the time he was using um, one of those fatigues to raise his armor, so I was so still able to spend it right away. Yeah, so, yeah, so I was still able to get another activation out of it. So yeah. I think the best thing to do is sometimes just shut that unit down and, and stop it, particularly if there are more activations to come. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was eating that a lot. That's why, luckily, I have two shooting units. Um, I was being real careful to draw that out either on my. 
um, crossbows or my uh, archers because I really did not want him hammering it onto my okay. uh, javelin guys. So. You took the crossbow warrior. I did actually so take crossbows. I know some people aren't, aren't a big fan of them. interesting choice. Yeah, some people don't like them. Some why, people aren't a fan. Why did you go for them? Because I had them painted right. All righty. Because yeah, in first baby. edition, they were fantastic when you can just spam shots, yeah. and I still had them painted. Machine gun, yeah. It was a little different back then. The levy would get fatigued. For yeah. a crossbow, and the warriors could just do it. As, yeah, as yeah, the, the, yeah. The warriors were, were uh, in first edition. They were the the, the savior of that board. I felt like mm -hmm. it's warrior crossbows. So, okay, cool. And you feel like the crossbows lived up to their potential? They did fine. I got to shoot them into some mounted hearth guard, uh, what, like twice, I think. Yeah, that's and pretty they good. When you that's, line that, per yeah, that's satisfying. I think I got three uh, three hearth guard with one shot um, in turn one of my second game, and. Uh, like three or four warriors in one shot on mm -hmm. my third game, so that's that's good stuff. Get the mounted hard. It just takes one, yes. one volley per game. Yes, mm. it came to be. <laughs> yeah. It was so, worth it. Second round, I think you played Tom with the yes. Mutatawia. Yes. I, so, do you know a lot about that board going in? Uh, I've only played like three games of Age of Crusades, and I had not played Mutatawia, but I'm looking. I'm, I'm like I'm actively looking at those three um, Muslim boards because that's my next mm -hmm. project. I've got them built. They're great plastic right now. Yeah. I haven't I haven't really played it much. I played Moors twice, but uh, I'm looking at the Mutatawia board a little bit too. So I was kind of prepared, but also very nervous. <laughs> I wasn't sure what all was going to happen, and a couple of times he caught me out. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So Tom's kind of a, a newer player in, yeah. in our area, and he's kind of had struggle with the mutt but you were sweating at a couple points there couple what points. was what was a sweat point i know well, like he, he was really shutting down some shooting with uh oh i don't know all the names of the abilities uh, he has one that gives him i think four defense dice there was one so with two commons really absorb. Yeah, okay or you maybe shunt four hits automatically yeah yeah that's something. when he was using a lot although it was eating up a lot of his dice so i think it's a two dice ability. Yeah, yeah. There, there was a little bit of give and take there it, it for sure shut down one attack Mm -hmm. But uh, I was queuing up multiple attacks, just shoot a lot, a lot, a lot. Yes. So he was uh, weathering the storm a little bit. I was scared of the camels because I'm very emotionally invested in my mounted hearth guard. <laughs> They're my boys. Yes. So uh, I've had many discussions with him yeah. about, uh, all right, you got to get your camels mm -hmm. into their hearth guard. And then every time they miss, it's a hit mm -hmm. with that ability in the lower left-hand corner. And uh, it's kind of like the crossbows where you just hold back. And if you can just get that once okay. in the game, you're golden. I, I think he queued it up, but he I drew out his ability where he dumps the four hits mm -hmm. on the other side of the board when I shot at some warriors. And he was kicking himself afterwards because then sure. I went right in with the crossbows into those... Uh, um, those four mount. You shot the camels. camels with the crossbows, and that's where I took three on one. Oh, so yeah. at that point, I was like, "All right, my my warlord's right there." I'm like, "All right, he'll finish off the last one." And then I was camel free. <laughs> yeah, because you can't even <laughs> leave good. that one camel because uh, yeah, of, because wanna, of the way that ability works. Yeah, you know, you know, I don't want any camels on the board. You can generate an unlimited number of hits. So, although I'm excited to play some camels when I get 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 around to playing. Yeah, that's definitely games. one reason. They're cool to run those They're guys. They're cool. So round three, you got matched up against Terry yeah, using yeah. the Mongols. Yeah, Terry and I are, are a guy. We, we've played. We've we've hung out um, at Games Plus in Schaumburg a few times, where I've driven out to the mm -hmm. Chicago area. But we've never actually played against each other. I've always played against the other guys who are there. So it was nice to finally play against them. I didn't know much about Mongols though. Yeah. So as I was kind of watching you guys set up, and I was thinking about the scenarios, I'm like, oh wow, I think. The scenarios I picked, I don't think he specifically chose the Mongols. It was just a project he's working sure. on. Like, I'm like, this is a Mongol <laughs> list of scenarios. So the first round was violation, just kill the markers, yep. you know, so no penalty to cavalry. The second round was new feud. So again, no specific penalty to the cavalry, and actually there's a lot of room in the middle to mm -hmm. run, and it keeps the terrain away. You know, So if the shooters want to get in range, they might have to pop out. And then the last round was victory points of massacre, survival, and then end up on the other side mm -hmm. of the board. So he's definitely set there. So there, there yeah, was, there he was had no, no problems with mobility. There was no feasting and pillaging, basically, yeah. that would make you think twice about running Mongols or okay. maybe uh, 
have a different build with some levy or something. So he was able to use like a full mounted. Yeah, he was all mounted. Build, uh, I believe. Yeah, which is always really impressive in Saga because it looks it takes up so much space. Yes. You're like this. This is too many points. It's, it's not a legal. List. It's intimidating, yeah. right? Yeah. So when I saw that matchup, I saw you had the Flemish, mm-hmm. and I'm like, well, I hope Andrew like moves them every turn because if he doesn't think ahead like he might be impossible to get him over the center line well, in theory it only takes two moves because uh, yeah I'm, on, just, I'm even on slightly smaller than a one inch base so two moves gets me across so that's all i need to do so as long as he knows he's got to do that and then the same thing with the the levy and the rocky ground like he, I, didn't, I didn't get my right over. so yeah. oh they went down they went down yeah. because well whole thing like he had one guy in front of me exhausted I can make a short move to him to kill him with my levy, and he's like, "Okay, that'll that'll advance me." Uh, he's armor. I made him armor two with the with all that stuff, and I still couldn't kill him with my four dice. Oh no! He had to roll. Bounce back. I bounced back backwards, and then I didn't have enough moves to keep going, so they died. Okay. I would I would have probably done that move. Yeah, and went for it. I was, I was two plus right. Um, so what was a, a key moment? Right. Was there a one? Was there one key moment to? They kind of flipped the game. I know I kind of looked over there. It looked like maybe he was plinking away. And then he had a couple couple uh, mounted guys off on the side. Mm-hmm. And then I came back later, and then there was a whole lot of mounted guys so in the Deadpool. I, I, I messed up early. There was I, I left a unit of warriors out that I, I, I don't know. When I was assigning my dice, I figured I needed to pull those guys away, and mm-hmm. I didn't. And he came around and blew those guys up and put me on the back foot. And I wasn't... I wasn't prepared for. He's got some. Some. I think it's like a two dice ability where he can make me re-roll my defense dice on his shooting. And he just blasted mm. oh, my crossbows off the board. Oh, okay. Like my. Uh, so yeah, he kills like seven guys in a in a, with uh, a round or two of shooting. That, yeah, he had, that's good. Yeah. He was he was super hot with the rare dice, so he was he was just throwing those into the combat pool. And he, he like. I he saw that over like the course dice. of the tournament. He was he had those rares in the combat yeah. pool, adding two shots or two defense dice. Yeah, he says he doesn't really have a good, good necessarily a, a, a mandatory rare dice like that he, that he uses. That he uses. So he's just okay. using them for for, uh, for shooting dice. And, uh, I don't know. I, I, it hurt, so I guess it worked. Took some damage. So, so was, he comes in early. Takes out some warriors, plugs up your crossbow. Yeah, like turn. So what do you? I think that was turn to, turn two. Yeah, he knocked out two dice. So I had to play four dice for the rest of the game. Wow. Yeah, that's. So I was not happy. Sweat. Yeah. Luckily, I got some key rares, um, so I was able to suddenly make those giant moves with my hearth guard using retreat and make twenty four inch charges. And all this stuff is like low armor because they've got those uh, mounted. Yeah, if you get to it, it's gonna die. Yeah. 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 So Sorry. I was able to start really smashing some stuff up. He had pulled a unit back, um, just to get it, get it, try to get to safety, but he, it was that ability where he has to end close to his hearth guard, mm-hmm. or else he eats three fatigue. He ate the three fatigue, and then I got managed to get, re, get uh, retreat queued up. So like, anytime I can charge something exhausted, fantastic. It's hard to hide on a saga board when. If it's twenty four inch, yes, right. yes. And it, you know, if you need to, it could be thirty six. Yeah. You know? So that was key. You know, I, I use one fatigue to make myself armor six, and he's got a minus one. So now I'm invincible with an eight pack of hearth guard, no fear. And that the moment I'm talking about, I love it. Blowing yeah. up a, a huge unit, and they can do nothing back to me. So that's great. Mm-hmm. And then I managed to do get the next do, next turn with four dice again. I got that rare as I would go hunt down that camel drummer. That camel drummer that was activating that whole that whole army for no dice. Oh, it was very satisfying. It's got to be probably one of the most satisfying thing. I mean, the only thing better would be killing Peter the Hermit somehow. <laughs> you know, I haven't faced somehow Peter in the midst of Peter the levees taking uh, yeah. him down. <laughs> okay, but the second best has to be the camel drummer. Yeah, it was it was good. It was good. Um, so you got it. Uh, now he actually had to activate oh, stuff with Saga dice. Damn it, Saga dice. Um, so what was the kind of final tally was it did have close so what was the first calculation was survival points was that close or was he i didn't feel like i was well ahead but it was like 14 to 6 actually on survival points because i had blown up some of his units where some of mine were like hanging on so he was eating the penalty for those units that were dead so i was i I didn't i did not fairly big difference i did not it didn't feel that way at all but um i don't know yeah the survival point thing where you take multiple units 
seems yeah. good, but it can turn very quickly when those are destroyed. Mm-hmm. You start racking up the negative ones. Yeah. And you start generating. The other thing is, if you're not generating a saga dice, so if those warriors take a couple of wounds, you know, they're really not generating much for survival at all. Yeah. If they're not generating a site, you know, one or two points. Or like a hearth guard unit, you know. Could, you got an eight pack if they were yeah. if they were living at the time. That's I kept nine, them. Al- I kept them eight alive pack for a long of nine time. points. Yes. Yeah, so that kind of explains the fourteen to six. So yeah, yeah, that's a big see, disparity like, there. So he took a surprise number of yeah. casualties when he went after that warrior unit I left out. He did throw his hearth guard at me, but I mean they're mounted with a uh, boat. What? He might have used the thing where they have javelins, so they, they were they were vulnerable to getting uh, yeah. getting the, the counterpunch. He took a surprising number of casualties there. Uh, the first black mm-hmm. yeah. So, in the end, was it close? It was the deal sealed by turn four or five, or did it go, no, it was, go it was, to the end? It was kind of hanging in the balance the whole time, honestly. Um, it was a real good game. I think that was my favorite game of the, the tournament. Okay. Well, yeah, like I said, you came out on top. Yeah. Terry was ahead in kind of the turn on, tournament point structure and how that works. Yeah, I didn't get any of the war. So balls. if it was a draw, you know, he would have come out on top. So you kind of sure. needed to lock in the win and stop him from getting some of the bonus points, which he did. So uh, you played three good games, and then on top of it, turns out you're not a jerk. You had uh, two favorite opponent votes. Who knew? Who knew? Uh, and since uh, there are a number of people who got those, but the person with the highest – you know, battle score probably is the best sport if you manage to do that. And so people don't hate me? Because yeah. I mean, if, if you're bottom table and you're best sport, you know, obviously you can explain that away. Sure, so, sure. So, Took a beating like a, a gentleman. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, uh, yeah, well, thanks for coming on and chatting about the tournament. This was fun. I, I, I love talking good time. Yeah. yeah, great time. Thank you so much for running this. Yeah, we'll do it again, and I uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. Thank you. Right, see ya. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more pics of the armies or terrain or anything else at the event, you can click on the community tab on the Rodgers YouTube site here or head on over to the Discord server for Saga Thursday and click on the tournament channel and I post all the pics there as well. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one. Saga! like to see more saga content consider joining the heathen army over on patreon or popping on down to the saga doors day discord server links below thanks guys